Psalm 61, 61. Hear my prayer, <coughs> hear my cry, God attend to my prayer. When the end of earth, I'll cry to you. My heart is overwhelmed. Limited rock that is higher than life. Even a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I abide in the of forever. I'll trust in the shelter of wings, for you, God, have heard my vows. You give me the heritage of those who fear you, and you prolong the king's life. He sees as many generations. Here shall I before God be forever. I prove a message of which my preserve. So I sing praise to him forever, that I will daily perform my vows. Okay, so Psalm 61 is the third psalm in the sixth hour of the Rea, Coptic Prayer Book. Uh, this psalm, if we look at the title, as we always usually do, to the chief musician on a string instrument, a psalm of David. So it's directed to the chief musician, which it could arguably be Christ, could be Asaph, could be a, a group of people, could be a specific tune. Um, and on a string instrument, probably like a harp, uh, most likely a harp, uh, a psalm of David. We don't know exactly when this was written, but we get a bit of clues, a couple of clues, as we'll see in the text. Uh, and the, the title that we give it, Assurance of God's Eternal Protection. Uh, so we'll see a couple of those clues. But what's important to remember is that this psalm, um, overall, it's, it's, it's kind of divided into two sections. It's, uh, it's kind of like a complaint uh, to God. Hear my cry, O God, it's end of my prayer, the first few verses, right? And then it's God's answer. God's answer, and it, it uses two um, two objects, if you want to call it, or two two thing two things to describe shelter. Sorry, so two yeah two objects, tower and rock, both referring to like protection. God's God has answered our prayer. He's answered David's prayer. He's answered our prayer. Rock and tower. Because okay, so we'll get to that. Um, so what the clues that I was mentioning? It's pretty clear that. David was in trouble uh, when he wrote this psalm. You see ex exclamation marks. Uh, hear my cry, God, attend to my prayer. And there's a cry out to you. He's, he's, he's calling out to God. Uh, he wants an answer. Uh, why would he say, hear my cry, God, if he feels like he's not being heard? It's pretty self expansion there. Uh, and, and, and attempt to my prayer. And, 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 and he says, my heart is overwhelmed. That's very clear. So I was, it's, it's overwhelmed. Uh, so we'll see. That's a part, part, so, and also it says here, from the end of it, I'll cry to you. So I think the, the clue could be here that this verse is said when he was not in his uh, homeland, so to speak, or he wasn't safe. So maybe when he was running away uh, from Saul, Maybe when uh, Absalom was trying to ki uh, kill him, uh, that's definitely a possibility. So uh, I think we see that there. Um, let's go. Uh, let's go through a couple of this. Hear my cry, uh, God, attend to my prayer. In the earth, I'll cry out to you. So we see that. I look at that and I say, not every prayer is heard, because he's saying, attend to my prayer. He's asking God to hear my prayer, and maybe sometimes. Uh, the, pray the prayer is not being heard, quote-unquote, because of the person praying. Uh, not all prayer is heard, uh, so to speak, meaning uh, you could pray for the wrong things. Uh, yeah, we can look at an example in a second. Uh, you can pray for the wrong things. Uh, or, or your character, your personality, or what your, 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 your lifestyle means God will intentionally will, will refuse to hear your prayer. He, he's going to ignore it. Yeah, he may he he'll hear it, in terms of uh, God, you know, hears everything. He knows everything, but he will he will reject he will reject the prayer. So I was reading in a book recently called "The Field: Cultivating Salvation," and you see it, it has a whole section on the Pharisee. So um, the Lord rejected um, the prayer, like the prayers of the Pharisee, because of his character. Um, uh, and it talks about his deficiency in his humility. Uh, he even <coughs> gave a general term of Pharisee. Pharisee is very interesting. Okay. Um, and how the Pharisee didn't want to admit that he is sinful. Uh, it goes into other things. But this is an example where uh, the prayer was not heard because of the character of the person. 
and here's the text. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this case collector. And, and his prayer was, was rejected because of the character of the person. Um, so not all prayers necessarily heard or attended. Everyone says attend to my prayer. Uh, so you have to, you have to, as much as possible, align your your will with God uh, to hear God's will. Uh, align, sorry, align God's will with your will, <laughs> so that you, God will hear. So if you're following the commandments uh, and, and striving to to, to 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 live with Christ, He, he will hear. You. He will hear. You. But if you don't do that, if you don't do the first step, if you're not aligning uh, uh, your with God's will, you you will be rejected. If you're not following the commands, following his path. I at least striving as much as possible. So we certainly see the desperation, as we said. My heart is overwhelmed, limited rock that is high and high. You see the metaphor there uh, of the rock and the strong tower from the enemy. Uh, and like many of the Psalms, you see David going through despair, feel distant from God. And we, I will cry to you. You see, from the earth, I will cry to you. Put yourself, put your name in this. Uh, I put myself in this my, this category many times. <laughs> Here, my car got to tend to my breath and earth. I will cry out to you. My heart is overwhelmed. Limited rock that is hiding. I think that's very nice. We put our own name in that prayer. And we don't give up. We don't give up and we strive. And God hears. You know, and, we, and, we, and we appeal. We appeal to God. Um... Uh, with the rock, uh, like we said, it's a metaphor, stability, uh, security, it could mean salvation, refuge, Israel, uh, Israel uh, hope, uh, hope for refuge for Israel, uh, hope, for, hope for all of us. So, I mean, uh, so we use the term colloquially now, like one of my friends I uh, remember, is, he, he, he calls his wife the rock, but sometimes put pictures of her. And, She's she's definitely the rock of the family and so forth. Um, so Christ is our rock, okay, and he's, he's not even close to nothing even higher uh, higher than him. Like he is, is, is our true true rock. So imagine if we can get our rock from a, uh, a wife. Imagine how much Christ is the real rock. Um, so and especially especially in times of trouble. That's why we say, what's, what's a rock? For? What do we need to, 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 like a wife to be a rock or God to be a rock? Because uh, we need protection. We need to be shield, shielded. Uh, we need to have hope. We need the, the refuge. God is our refuge and so on. Uh, especially during times of captivity, which probably David was at the time. He was probably was running away. Uh, he's gone through some, some serious adversity. Just like you go through, and me and you will go through a, a serious adversity. We need... Christ to be our rock. We need to feel that. We need to cry out to God so that we can feel that He is our rock. Because He is. He really is. Um, it's only a messianic psalm, which we kind of touches upon shortly after. Uh, for you, God of Hermon, you, you prolong the king's life, his years, as many generations. So, you see, you see here with just the, the uh, prolonging the king's life, David didn't live forever. So you can see that uh, in, in a literal sense, that it's probably referring to Christ. Yes, it could also be referring to David, to give him David a long life, but the the, the commentators and, and the use of talks about it, certainly a strong prevailing view is that uh, uh, it's a messianic psalm here referring to Christ's eternal kingdom, uh, and, he, and he will reign forever and ever. He's used as many generations. Um, or it could be, I mean, we could also apply to David as well. But I think it's very, it's very difficult to discount uh, uh, the messianic aspect to that. Uh, and, and I would argue that the church in its wisdom uh, has put this psalm in the sixth hour because of that reason. Uh, if we believe that uh, uh, the Lord is crucified in the sixth hour and that, uh, so we need a psalm that kind of relates to this. So I think the church's wisdom has put this psalm there because they believe that uh, the fathers believe that uh, it's referring to Christ, referring to the Messiah. And uh, and and you can also see it in just the key, the words here when it says mercy and truth, oh, prepare mercy and truth. So you see that in Psalm 85, I think it is. 
again, again, referring to Christ. Uh, I hope we get a look at a quick, quick verse on that. So here we see probably uh, this aspect referring to David. And you asked, and the kingdom shall be established forever for you. Your throne shall be established forever. Uh, but let's look at some messianic aspects. And the New Testament now. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. All right. So we will want to live uh, and reign with Christ, the, the, the eternal kingdom. Um, Revelation 22, 3, 5. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in him, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. And they need no lamp, no light of the sun. The Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. So we reign with him. We reign with him uh, forever and ever, uh, as many generations uh, for God forever. And so we also see here the importance of verse 5. Verse 5, for you've got to affirm my vows. You've given me the heritage, heritage of those who fear your name. So the heritage here, Meaning we're sharing. We are sharing in the kingdom. We are sharing in what's what said follow the, the, the following verses. We are sharing with Christ. Uh, and we partake of this eternal life. Uh, uh, we are you know, prolonged with the king. The, the king of kings, the Messiah. So I think that's, uh, that's, that's nice. Um, yeah, and the other thing that we said, the analogy is a strong tower from the enemy. So um, the metaphor here of the tower, yeah, like in, if you've ever been to Sydney Tower, it goes very high up, it's a big, very, really, very really building. Uh, you can do a skywalk and you, and you see how like large it is. <laughs> it costs a lot of money to build. Um, so that's just yeah, just a human, human metaphor so we can understand. Uh, and we want to be partake with Christ. Uh, yeah, just the last thing to say. Um, I think I think that uh, we thank God every day. We worship Him every day, so we see our servants sing praise Him forever. That I'm a day performer. Let's look at the shift, the shift here from the verse, first few verses, and he, 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 he gets an answer, and he's thankful, and he's praising God. Uh, so we don't give up. We never lose hope. We 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 look to to God who is higher than us. Uh, uh, even even why do people in alcoholics I'm honest, they tell you pray to someone high, uh, higher you got to ignore someone something higher than you, higher power than yourself so we so so was, we believe in, uh, in in higher power we need, we we are small we weak people we need to look up limit to the rock that is higher than I um, and 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 uh, and uh, we love that uh, 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 analogy. When uh, Christ is speaking the parable, and the nice parable, therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, Matthew 7, I will liken to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. You don't want to be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. So even like with the tower, as well, like you know, well, what's going to affect the tower? You're gonna if you're gonna have floods, 300 meters, 300 meters up, Sydney Tower, uh, and so you see this analogy of, of of protection. The winds blew. Well, what wind affects a uh, a Sydney Tower? Even really strong winds, it can it can handle really really strong winds. Uh, maybe you can't use the lift at a certain time, but like <laughs> a big wind is not going to tear down because it's, it's heavy heavy steel building house and. Uh, and it did not fall. Um, so I think, again, uh, we take comfort in this psalm. We cry out to God first and foremost. Like he's our first point to cry out to him. So we, we gain the comfort from God. We get an answer. And then we praise. And I guess me and myself as a monk, I perform my vows. Uh, I think, you know, oh, yeah, we have three. We have the three vows of monasticism. But I think for all of us, it's applying. Uh, they perform my my commitment to you, my desire to serve you, uh, my longing for you. Uh, uh, we, uh, we don't like quote unquote uh, uh, like sign a document, but we make a commitment to serve God, and we strive, uh, and we fall short. Of course, we fall short. We fall short. But we turn first and foremost to God in a source of trouble. We will find the everlasting comfort. We will find 
that uh, uh, he is the rock that is higher than I, who find that he's a strong tower from the enemy. And we stress again, we will live eternally with him. Uh, and we see this messianic aspect. And one final verse, he asked, Psalm 21.4, not in the clear, he asked life from you and you gave it to him. Thanks to days forever and ever. So we take comfort in looking beyond this so that we can reign eternally with him. But it's not always easy, but I think the psalm helps, uh, especially when David was going through tremendous adversity.